Now, I did a video a couple weeks ago uh, talking about Bernie Sanders' interpretation of voter turnout and how voter turnout had been lower than expectations. His whole uh, campaign is that we're going to have this huge voter turnout, we're going to have the greatest voter turnout ever, and that's going to drive us, or at least uh, drive my campaign to victory, and that is not what's happening. Primarily because he's relying on those 18 to 35 year olds, which are incredibly unreliable. How huge, it should say huge with a Y, how huge voter turnout eluded Bernie Sanders on Super Tuesday. Ah, Bernie Sanders, quote from the Vermont senator. Have we been as successful as I would hope bringing in the young people? He told reporters during a hastily assembled news conference in his campaign office in Burlington, Vermont. The answer is no. In Texas, where Mr. Biden prevailed over Mr. Sanders, only 15% of voters were younger than 30. Nearly two thirds were 45 or older, according to exit polls. In no state did people younger than 30 account for more than 20% of the electorate based on exit polls. And in most states, they accounted for 15% or less. Because so few young people voted, it did not matter that Mr. Sanders won them by huge margins because Mr. Biden won much more plentiful older voters. Now, I did a video prior to this um, talking about Bernie Sanders manipulating, uh, oh, what the hell was that video? I was talking about how he was interpreting voter turnout and he was looking at percentages versus total viewers. And it seemed like a fairly innocuous, he didn't think the numbers were right and voter turnout may or may not have been uh, higher than expected. The point of that video was not to say that Bernie Sanders is a liar. It's simply to point out that he was on the road to not producing the voter turnout that he is needing in order for his revolution to happen. Meaning, his whole idea is that I'm going to be able to bring out new people with my amazing ideas. But that's not how people work. Most people, they're not going that far. They're not that wild. They don't really want change like that. They want to feel comfortable, especially older people. And to think that you're going to be able to win an election with only young voters when they're a fairly unreliable voting bloc, because you know the black vote started this whole thing. Who re resurrected Joe Biden's campaign? It's the black vote. Now, did Joe Biden earn it? Absolutely not. Did he offer anything for it? Absolutely not. Was anything asked of him? Absolutely not. But it was available. You saw Tom Steyer peel off a nice percentage of it, cost him millions and millions of dollars in a horrible uh, moment with Juvenile. But there are ways to get the actual blocks of people who vote that you're actually going to need to show up at the polls, you know, like black people and older voters. Like, you need those people, okay? So when I made that video the other day and I said, hey, maybe Andrew James should, should drop UBI, it's not because I think UBI is a horrible idea. No. It's because I'm trying to work in the confines of what is available to actually get something done. I'm a doer. I don't like having rallies for no reason. I don't want to go stand out holding no flag. I want to hold victory parties. I want to talk about like successes and getting things done. Not always fighting trying to get something done because for some reason I can't figure out how to compromise with the other side. I don't want that. All right. You're going to bring out record vote? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, Bernie. Record numbers? Let's not do that. How about you just bend the knee a little bit? How about you just say, hey, maybe we should tweak some of these policies so we can actually get some stuff done, maybe get a couple of votes. And, you know, you're running on ideas that are already controversial, so how could you possibly produce that? In addition, while Mr. Sanders succeeded in galvanize, uh, galvanizing Latino voters, he won them by about 27 percentage points over Mr. Biden in California. He has struggled to build support among black voters. In Alabama, where black voters were half of the electorate, Mr. Sanders lost them by more than 60 points. He lost them by more than 50 points in Virginia and by more than 40 points in Texas and North Carolina. In several states, he came in third among black voters, not only behind Mr. Biden, but also Michael R. Bloomberg. What I tell you about Bloomberg? I told y'all Bloomberg can get the black vote, man. I Stop and frisk. He blamed his underperformance in part on the venom of the corporate media. Now you can see he's refocusing, retargeting his uh, his campaign to basically um, attack Joe Biden's voting record and all that. People aren't voting for Joe Biden, fam. Like you're missing the point. People are voting against you. Now, with that said, obviously the establishment doesn't like Bernie Sanders. Obviously the media doesn't like Bernie Sanders. That was the people, man. Yang suggested that lowering voter age to 16 
um, would help to bring in younger people into the process. And because they become more familiar with voting and it becomes a normal part of their life at a younger age, then you're more likely to increase voter turnout because of habit. Like that's a psychological play. That's not sitting down and having a conversation with somebody and convincing them to uh, <laughs> and, and convincing them why they should vote. Like, good luck. That that's just what it is. Like, you want to make impact? Go to some nursing homes. You want to get some votes? Go to a nursing home. Old folks vote in all elections. Youth only vote in the general. Ding, ding, ding. That's why I've, I've been backing off of people, or I've been backing off of the uh, like the, the old legislation, you know, the the crime bill and things like that. It's just because though though it's easy to say those things now. The people who were voting were not the young people. The people who were voting on these things were the older people who felt like their community was being overrun and they wanted to do something about it. And there was no opposition to them. Politicians were doing the will of the older people. Every, well, everything. Most of what you're getting is from that older, more reliable, more lucrative, you know, demo. Like, you know, you got your corporate people, your corporate sponsors and things like that. And then you have older people who have money to invest in campaigns. So, hey, again, I'm not trying to beat up on the, the progressive movement. We can learn a lot from them, but we can definitely go further. I told you guys, I, I, I do social media for a living. Um, I, I literally will have people hit me up and ask me what my phone number is. My phone number is on the top of my Instagram account. It's in the top of my Facebook. Like all my, my, my contact information is readily available, but because it's not in the exact box that that person is typing, that's too far. That's just way too much of an ask. And people are getting more lazy and they're getting more comfortable. And if it's even slightly inconvenient, there's a, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get anything done from people. I've been out here and let me tell you, there's not a lot of 25-year-olds, not a lot of college kids. They're just not there for a, a multitude of reasons, but they're just not reliable. I don't think I've ever seen somebody who appears to be 18 on a voting day, except for when Barack Obama was running for president. And that's probably also because I voted on college campus. But other than then, I don't really think I've ever seen a young person voting. Not, I mean, obviously, they, some of them do, but just, they're just unreliable. You know what I mean? So since they're unreliable, how about you go to reliable people, see if you can get something done?